So hopefully you can see, yeah, that's as good a place. Well, hang on, let me just move over to the other camera. I just missed it, bear with me. So we'll go, go through the ingredients first for regardless of whether you're doing vegan or traditional, these are gonna be the ingredients that you use. Um, so hopefully you guys can see that. We're gonna start with some shallots. So that's been minced up really, like it's not, super mince, but it's really small. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, along with the garlic that's going in as well, so that's four cloves each. Um, and that's with the onions, sorry, with the shallots, they're shallots, they're not onions. And so shallots, as you know, typically used in salads, um, have a lighter, less sort of bite and pungency to it. And that's kind of what we want to add to this dish. We don't want it to be too oniony. You can use French shallots if you don't have red shallots, but you want to be using shallots or else you would use very little onion as a substitute and preferably um, the Spanish or red onion instead of the brown onion, because that one's really strong. So that's going to go in. Um, so that's um, about 75 grams. Not sure what that is in pounds. Um, and then we've got four cloves of garlic and that's been minced up. So that's to start in terms of the ingredients for the fry. The other things are julienne um, carrots. So that's been sliced up nice and thin. Um, we've got some cabbage, which has been shredded as well. Uh, we've got the, the white part of the spring onions or scallions, and I've just julienne them as well. So they're roughly all the, the same length. And our bean sprout is the yardstick for this dish. I try to make everything roughly that size because it's bite size. So whether it's the carrots or the cabbages you've seen, they're all kind of roughly that size. Um, the last thing that goes in at the end is gonna be the bean sprouts. And then we're also gonna have some garnish. So the garnish is just over here. We've got red chilies. So these are big chilies, they're not terribly spicy, doused in soy sauce. And these are the green parts of the spring onions. And all I've done here is I've julienned them as well and thrown them into some ice water. That's why they're curly. So if you don't want them curly, you can just kind of slice them up and have them ready to go. But I think they kind of look pretty cute and, and, and um, kinky <laughs> with the curls. So I decided to just throw them in some ice water. And you can do that at any point if you decide that you've cut them up yesterday or this, you know, this morning and you kind of want to do ice water thing now, they'll still curl. So that's up to you to do. But that's something that we'll do uh, with garnish uh, at the end. And then we've got our sauces. So hopefully you can see those. We've got three different sauces. Um, we've got uh, the dark soy sauce, um, the light soy sauce. And before I talk about that, let's just talk about dark and light soy sauce. So dark soy sauce typically is used for cooking. It's used to give color because it's concentrated. It's not viscous. So it's not like ketchup manis. Ketchup manis is uh, sort of an Indonesian Malay type of soy sauce. Um, that's not what we're using when I say dark soy sauce. I want to be very clear. That's this guy here. It's more like a molasses. We're not using that. We are, however, using a dark soy sauce that's more of the same um, viscosity as regular soy sauce. You can see that they're both quite runny there. And um, we're using the dark one because Singapore noodles is brown and I want to give that color to it. I like having the light soy sauce on standby in case I want to add a little bit of extra liquid to the dish. Um, but those are our soy sauce um, substitutes, uh, rather uh, ingredients. So if you, the substitute there is if you don't have either of those, you could just use table soy sauce. And I believe I've adjusted that in the recipe that I sent out. Um, the other thing we'll be using that's really exciting is uh, Chinese cooking wine. Uh, Chinese cooking wine, and I'm going to pull out the bottles because I'm not going to say the names right. <laughs> there are two different kinds. So we've got the one on the on this guy, which is a translucent kind, and this is the one that's gone into the marinade, whether it's tofu, beef, or chicken. Typically, we use this one for marinades because we don't really want to overpower the marinade. We want a clean um, flavor and uh, flavor profile going into the marinade. It's more just kind of a background kick of the cooking wine. Um, the Shaoxing, however, is, has got a, it's, it, it'll compete for attention. So if you kind of think about them like salt and soy sauce, that would be the same thing. So this one's a very clean flavor. This one's got more complex depth. So we'll use this guy in the uh, marinade for the tofu or the chicken if you've already done that. That's the one you should have used. Um, if you are um, not able to find that, cooking sherry is a good option. Um, Shao Sing will be using to at the end of the dish to deglaze and that's two tablespoons of that right there. And so that one's a golden color as well. Um, so yeah, so that's a quick tutorial in Chinese ingredients. Does anyone have any questions on that or any questions particularly on substitutions? Um, 
holler at us right now. Otherwise, I'll switch over to the next part of um, just checking. Um, Ruby, are we good? Are there any questions coming out from anybody? Um, doesn't look like it at this stage. I'm just going to jump ahead. Um, all right, we're going to get started with our, let me just jump in and take a quick look. We'll start with the egg today. Um, so I've put two eggs and some fish sauce. So that's sitting in here. It's very, um, bear with me, I've just lost the screen. Um, can you guys, you, you guys can still see my screen share, correct? Thumbs up? Yes. Perfect. I'm just trying to figure out where it's gone. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So I've got two eggs in here um, and I've added a teaspoon of fish sauce. I think I saw a question out there for a substitute for fish sauce. Um, you can get vegan fish sauce if that's what you're worried about, though you wouldn't be eating eggs if you're a vegan. Another alternative would just be the same amount of soy sauce or um, chicken stock or vegetable stock. So just a teaspoon of that to get it going. Um, and it's just gonna give that egg the flavor it needs. I mean, worst case scenario, you can always just add a little bit of salt. Um, I like adding fish sauce because with Singapore noodles, it is a compilation of very many different ingredients and they all tend to have their different flavors. And so this gives that flavor to the egg and that's the reason why I add fish sauce. So I'm gonna get the pan going so we can fry up the egg. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil and it's a nonstick pan, so it doesn't need oil, but I do like to put a little bit on just because it's gonna help caramelize some of the, uh, some of the uh, flavors in the egg. Um, I like to think, yeah, oh, go ahead. Um, yes, if people don't eat cabbage, do we answer this question? Sorry. Um, could you substitute something else or will that change a dish? Um, is it specifically cabbage or, I mean, there are different variations of cabbage, like there's Napa cabbage and there's Chinese cabbage. Um, is, is, is it just cabbage or um, all, is it a specific cabbage that you don't eat or it's all types of cabbage? Would be the question I had back to that person. Yeah, okay, we'll see, we'll see what, uh, what they say. Um, Last question before we let you keep going with your amazing thing. Um, what kind of oil are you using to fry the eggs? Yeah, I've just used a very basic vegetable oil. So I use canola oil and it was just a smidge to kind of get the, the pan um, lightly oiled uh, for the actual. So, so I kind of think of cooking with a wok, like there is a couple of opening acts and then we'll make it to the main event. So these are all the opening acts. For the main event, I'll use sesame oil or peanut oil because it's got a higher smoke point and a little bit of flavor that we want to, to lend to the dish. For now, it's just plain vegetable oil. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, and actually, I should probably switch cameras for this. <laughs> um, so that egg's ready to go. Um, we might just go to the other camera because it's a close up. There we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and it's gonna be nice and hot, so. I'm just gonna let that kind of tilt all the way around. I want a really thin egg. So depending on the size of your pan, feel free to do just two eggs or, um, you know, not the full three eggs because what'll happen is it'll become thick and thick's fine. Some people like that sort of meaty bite to an egg, but for this one, we, we're gonna shred it and I'll show you the shredding in a little bit. And so the more crispy and brown it is, the better. And you, you, you get that by making the egg really thin. So hopefully, that um, helps with clarifying that one. But basically, we're just gonna let that sit and see about pulling some of the edges out. Yep, that's coming along really nicely. We're just gonna let that heat. So what I'm gonna wait for is for most of the top to be pretty much dry um, and then I'll flip it over and then we can keep it aside to 
cool um, before I slice it up while I make the prongs. Now it's probably worth calling out that for the vegan option, I've recommended dried bean curd sheets. So I'll quickly show you what that looks like um, and kind of talk you through the details. So this is what dried bean curd sheets look like. So that's them. So they come, this one's dried, but you can get them fresh. They almost, the fresh version almost looks like pasta, um, like big lasagna sheets in, in the cold food section. Um, so you can get them dry. If you get them dry, I've recommended you rehydrate them with vegetable stock. Um, but if you can't get them dry and you can get them fresh, then you can just use them and I'll show you how to prepare them um, to make them look like scrambled, sorry, not scrambled, but shredded omelet. So this guy's ready to flip. And I can't really do a toss because it's gonna hit the camera. So I'm gonna flip it like this instead. But can you see how that um, eggs just kind of brown very nicely like a normal omelet? Um, we're just gonna let the other side cook and then we will let him cool over here on the chopping board. Um, and so just to kind of finish up that chat on um, the tofu or the vegan substitute, what I've got here is basically the sheets that are sitting in liquid. And so they they just rehydrate. They, they take no more than 30 minutes to rehydrate. Um, I just think that tofu sheets is, is just, like they're underrated. They're actually such a wonderful alternative for, like I said before, pasta. Um, they're both vegan and they're gluten-free. Um, they're great to just add to dishes, um, soups, um, stir fries, all that sort of stuff. It's basically what, when you make tofu, the thin layer that forms at the top in the same way if you were playing around with milk um, is basically what that tofu sheet is. And you just pull that off and dry it. And so it's got a lot of flavor. To, uh, it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it, which again, like most other uh, tofu types, makes it very versatile because it's it's just this blank canvas that you can make and add flavors to. And then it's just got a nice consistency and texture when you cook with it. So this guy is pretty much done. Um, I'm going to let it curl up a little bit, um, which it's doing. And then I'm just going to let it cool on the side while I do the next dish. The egg almost looks like a crepe to me. Looks yeah, like <laughs> you can eat it on its own. In fact, um, I, I just made a big batch of egg foo young. I think you guys probably know what that is. Um, and, and typically it's made the same way, except it's got stuff in it like chicken stock and meat and veggies and it's delicious. Um, so I'm just gonna let that pan heat up. I'm gonna make, um, so if you're doing the traditional version, my recommendation is to make the prawns separately. Um, and, I, and I like to do that because in this household, my partner is allergic to prawns, so I like to keep it all divided. Um, but the other reason why you would make the prawns separately is because if you cooked it in the wok with everything else, it would actually overcook and become rubbery. So any dish that has prawns in it will typically be on the heat for just a couple of minutes to get it cooked because it doesn't need a lot of um, heat or time. And then once that's done, um, then you, know, you can kind of set it aside and add it back later on as garnish. So I'm just gonna do half a teaspoon of, of sesame oil this time, because I want that sesame flavor to go into the prawns. I'm just gonna drop that in and let that heat up really quickly. And then I'm gonna do the prawns, which I have over here. So I'm just gonna lay them down. So I've actually cut these prawns up, if you can see, and they've been properly opened up so that they butterfly a little bit. So that's just deveining them and then going a little bit further in. So I'm just gonna drop that in one at a time. Also, I think it's gonna let that steer. Is yeah. such a better name than shrimp. Um, oh. <laughs> I have a funny story. I had a, um, a friend once. She was my roommate. She's from Hong Kong, 
and she was like, I really want to go out to eat for prom. And I was like, hmm, what is she talking about? And then we had a good laugh uh, that they're also called shrimp in the U.S. Um, a couple quick questions for you. When you're making the marinade, any soy sauce recommendations? You mean in terms of type or like a specific brand? I don't know. Michelle, if you want to unmute and, and share more, please let us know. Um, as you're doing that, a quick question, is toasted sesame oil also known as Chinese sesame oil or regular sesame oil? Are there different kinds of oils we should know about? Oh, wow. I've never, um, that's an interesting question. Um, sesame oil, I've seen two types, uh, the regular kind and the uh, black kind. So black sesame oil is quite nice. It's got more earthiness to it. Um, uh, I think toasted sesame oil would probably be more like black sesame oil, but frankly, any of them, any of them are fine. We basically want a sesame or peanut flavor that will lend its this dish to uh, lend its taste to the dish. Um, I think sesame is better for this particular dish, and so any sesame is fine. And it's also because it's got a high smoking point. So I think at about two hundred and ten degrees Celsius, I don't, I don't know if that's four hundred ish Fahrenheit for you guys, um, and that's the reason we want that that oil. Um, so I, I would say to answer that question, any of the above sound great. And yeah, the other question on um, cabbage and the one that you just asked, Julia, happy to answer once those guys come back. Um, but they just forgot. While I wait. They forgot it. <laughs> they forgot. <laughs> That's okay. So can you guys see how these prawns are kind of curling at the corners? How pretty is that? And they're really caramelizing. Um, which, which is what I want. And they're almost done. They don't need a lot more time. Um, just going to give it a few more tosses around. And it's just got that very clean flavor. The only thing I'll do at the end is I'll probably deglaze the pan with a little bit of shousing. What was it? Grab... Degrease with? Deglaze with the shousing. So this guy, uh -huh. um, which is the, the, so cooking, so it's, it's the golden cooking wine as opposed to the translucent one. So I'm just gonna go in here with, that's probably no more than a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna do that and switch off the heat. Um, oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> so the heat is off um, and it's nicely charred and it's got that zing at the end, which, which is great. Um, I'm gonna quickly switch over to here. So I've just got a plate that I'm gonna put it on and let it sit to cool. You don't wanna leave it in the pan because if you leave it in the pan, um, it'll, it'll overcook. And so you wanna take it out and put it separately to cool while we cook everything else. smells quite nice. I'm a big fan of shrimp slash prawns. <laughs> and so um, I do like eating them once in a while. And there's the last one. And then we will move back to shredding the egg that's sitting in front of me. So hopefully you guys can see that. It's nice and pretty, pretty much a dish on its own, to be honest. It's um, quite tasty and quite simple with seafood um, as in any cuisine. You don't want to maybe put too many flavors in there. Um, fresh prawns always are quite nice on their own. So I'm just gonna get rid of the wok, move the prawns to the side for now. I'm gonna quickly show you, so we're doing the omelet now. I'm just gonna roll it up like, um, like a burrito without any filling. <laughs> and, and then I'm just gonna shred it up, so. nice and thin. We don't want chunky pieces because again, it's going to feel like you're eating noodles, uh, but it's actually going to be shredded egg when we've put the dish together. So I'm just going to grab a little box so you can start to see what it looks like. So it's really quite um, thin and finish the rest of it up and we will be able to get going with the next dish. And I'll quickly show you what the vegan version looks like, which is the tofu sheets. 
So just gonna nicely let that all jump around. And that's ready to go into the stir fry towards the end because it's already been cooked. Just to add to that wonderful flavor. And there we go. That's our scrambled eggs. Um, the ultimate, well, actually I'll leave that there just to show you how similar they look. But here's what the, so I've actually taken the tofu sheets and shredded it up and then kind of stir fried it, like braised it just a little bit with some canola oil as well. And that's how similar they look. So this guy's the tofu and this guy's the scrambled eggs we just made. Um, and so visually they look the same, but one's actually vegan. So I, I quite like either of them. I've made both versions of these dishes and they're both quite good. So, um, so that's with the eggs now. Um, oh, that's right. I needed to show you guys. So if you're doing, cause I'm doing the traditional version today, but if you weren't using prawns, you'd use shiitake mushrooms. So these are dried shiitake mushrooms that I rehydrated with some vegetable stock. Vegetable stock on its own is pretty tasty, but once you rehydrate them with the shiitake mushrooms, that stock becomes pure flavor. So I can't use that today because this is a very dry version of the dish. Singapore noodles are a very dry noodle dish. And so I'd save that stock for a stir fry or some soup. It's full of flavor and it's, it's, it's great again for vegans because it's got that meaty sort of a flavor and texture in the prawn, uh, not the prawn, the mushroom itself. So that's what you'd use if you were doing vegan. Um, and I think that's it. We can kind of kick over into the main event now. So I'm going to quickly, am I still sharing? I'm still sharing, aren't I? Just double checking. Um, cool. So this guy here is the chicken. So I've used dark soy sauce, uh, some cooking wine, um, cornstarch, um, and the secret ingredient, I think, is uh, white pepper. So unlike black pepper, it's not a punch in your face type of a pepper. It's more of a flavor pepper. And it's used a lot in um, South, Southeast Asian cooking. Um, and it's what makes it taste like Southeast Asian cooking. So if you've been trying to create any dish at home and um, you're like, oh, it doesn't taste like it does at the restaurant, it's probably white pepper, <laughs> just, just so you know. And so um, you can get it in, in whole um, spice. So that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and I just use a, a white pe uh, pepper grinder to grind it as you would. Um, it's great flavor. I highly recommend checking it out the next time you're at your Asian grocer. Um, but yeah, so that's what makes the chicken great. I'm just gonna quickly show you what the tofu looks like. So I marinated the tofu overnight and here's what it looks like. Um, so I've sliced it up in such a way that it looks like meat. So the, I'm just gonna pick up a piece and show you. So that, that um, outer layer makes it look like it's got a skin around it. And this also doesn't need to be pre-cooked. We'll cook it in the wok with, like we would the chicken. Um, and that's just been kind of cut from a wedge like so. So I do it on the diagonal so you get nice long pieces. And this is about a half an inch thick um, sheet of tofu. So I got a big chunk of tofu, kind of slice it down. So the, the thinner you, the, you want the strip, the thinner you would cut the sheets, marinate it, and then it'll give that outer layer of skin. And then you just chop it up like that. And then keep the extra marinade to go into the pan as well because that's just flavor we want to add to the dish. So that's what that vegan version looks like, just so that um, um, those that are planning on making it later um, have an idea. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm ready to jump in with the wok. And so I'm going to take silence as <laughs> a confirmation that everyone's savvy. That's my wok. He's going to get my wok stand going onto the wok. I'm going to switch cameras. So we're going to probably need the wide angle one. So that's my wok going on top. I'm also going to switch my gas because I need a really big fire for this one. And um, the reason we do maison place, which is the French way of saying everything in its place with woks is because it goes pretty fast. Um, now this wok doesn't have as high a heat, so we won't go terribly fast, which is probably a good thing given it'll slow things down and give me an opportunity to answer questions. But what I'm gonna do is get that fire started and get the wok heated up. The first thing that's gonna go in is the chicken, followed by the onions and the garlic. I do wanna sear the chicken. I really want it to hit the heat and just kind of cook. Um, and, and that corn cornstarch is gonna just create that layer of um, caramelized crunchiness, almost crunchiness. Um, and so the onions and the garlic, or sorry, shallots and the garlic will go in straight after I put the 
uh, chicken in. So, um, and you do the same thing with the tofu. So you'd kind of throw the tofu and let it sear uh, and then throw in the shallot and the garlics as, uh, garlic as well. I'm just gonna get some oil to go in there. So that's about two teaspoons of sesame oil. It's two teaspoons. I'm just gonna swirl it around and make sure that my wok is properly coated. You can see all that smoke coming up, which is just brilliant. I'm gonna go in with my chicken and that's pieces that I'm just gonna drop and not move so that they sear. Um, hey, Rosh, how come you're, how high is the heat for chicken, which is kind of a hard question to answer? Um, it's as high as you can make it. Hopefully you can hear me. I should have put a disclaimer to say that once I start cooking, it's going to get noisy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, perfect. So as high as it can be just to get the searing done, and then we'll drop the heat down. And we'll bring it back up later on. Hopefully that answers the question. Cool. Um, how come your marinade is so dark? Are, are we the soy sauce? The soy sauce. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you can use light. I just like it dark because any of that sauce that's dropped in there is also going to help with the uh, coloring the noodles as well. Gotcha. I'm going to let Ruby ask uh, the next couple questions, uh, starting oh. with Williams. Um. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I see that. Sorry, start. I didn't see it on the spot. You want me to ask one? Uh, start on want me to ask my question? Yeah, go for it. That's even better. Thanks, William. <laughs> Hi. Question. Could we use the cornstarch on the shrimp if we're not using chicken? You could, um, but let me just quickly stir this up and then I'll answer. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me, I've just stepped away. Uh, you can use a uh, cornstarch on the shrimp. However, I find shrimp quite succulent on its own. And unless you were gonna do like a breadcrumb shrimp, which is a completely different recipe where you could add like oats and other um, like panko breadcrumbs, um, you typically wouldn't want to, um, but it's really personal preference. If you like that sort of bite to it and you wanna give it a shot and experiment, it, it, it's, worth, it's worth trying. Um, okay, thank you. But you would wanna add you would want to add just a smidge of um, the white cooking wine. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, just to help the cornstarch um, stick to the prongs. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. I just put the garlic in for anyone that's following along. <laughs> yeah, it's like a sound effect. If only we could... Uh, we say this every class, like just go like this and actually smell it. Uh, but I'm imagining it. So oh, it's 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 great. I love. I mean, I love this. This all of this reminds me of home. So for me, it's really wonderful. Um, so I've just put the garlic in there. I'm about to throw the corn. Uh, sorry, not the corn. The carrots in. And so the carrots and the cabbage have water in them. And so it's about to get really smoky because we're going to get all that water to evaporate out of the vegetables. Carrots take longer to cook, so I start with that, and I'll add the uh, cabbage in a bit. Uh, can can you uh, I have a question? Can you substitute the wok with a cast iron pan? You could, but you just need to be careful with the heat because cast iron retains a lot of heat. So if you turn the heat up, you probably need to do that at the start and then drop it way back down. So you oh. kind of go to a lower heat and just kind of keep going with it. And you, you can turn it higher back up towards the end and I'll show you that and tell you why as well. Um, how long did you marinate the chicken? And did it have soy sauce and sesame oil? 
so it did. So it had sesame oil, it had soy sauce, it had the white, or the translucent cooking wine, white pepper, um, and cornstarch for chicken. So I did it, I recommended it for the tofu uh, to be done overnight, so it created that color. And that's also why I suggested using dark soy sauce. Um, but the chicken, I only did for 20 minutes. So I did it this morning just before. So chicken doesn't need that long to marinate um, compared to the tofu. I have a question on the chicken marinade. You just said you put soy sauce in there? Yes. Because um, um, it's not in the list. It's how not. Much, and um, how, how much did you put in? A tablespoon for the quantity. So I'll and send an did, updated recipe card. Yep, go ahead. Was it light or dark? So it's up to you. I, I would recommend dark if you want that really dark color. But if you've got light, light's fine too. So it's, it's personal preference. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And that's a good call out. I forgot to add soy sauce to, to the list. So when I send Julia and Ruby the updated recipe card, I'll be sure to add that in. So that's just gonna cook its way down. And the next thing that goes in are the white portion of the scallions, the spring onions, because um, they take quite a while to cook. And then we're going to be putting the noodles in. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys the noodles. <laughs> so as you can see, they're still quite springy. I've rehydrated them. So again, in the instructions, I put that you should drop them in boiling water. So I, I did a little bit of experimenting and I think that actually it should just go into lukewarm water or, um, or warm-ish water for twice the amount of time. That way it doesn't cook um, too much and it's still kind of got a bite to it so that when we throw it into the wok, it's gonna have that sort of flavor from the wok and the sauces go into the noodles as it completely cooks in the wok. So again, I, I call out that I said to put boiling water in the instructions. Um, but yes, a little bit of experimenting on my end, and I think that warm water is probably best. Those are the spring onions that have gone in, and it's not going to take long before I put the noodles in now. And... Going to get the sauces ready to go in with the noodles. So, it's if you would be bad for your eyes, honey. If They're you guys were doing, <laughs> I think somebody needs to go on mute. Um, if you were doing the vegan, the shiitake mushrooms could go in now. Um, if you want them cooked more, um, you can kind of saute them for a little bit longer, uh, but they will get kind of warmed up and cooked with the noodles as well. I'm going to throw the noodles in now. Um, here we go. I try to break them up a little bit, otherwise it'll be one big clump of noodles and it won't incorporate with the rest of the dish. So I just put them in little separated balls. I'm gonna pop that in. And I'm gonna start with the dark soy sauce. So that's two tablespoons going in. Um, we'll get to uh, the part about the noodles. That's a great question, but let's hold on that and only focus on the urgent. Um, when do you add the shallots and when, what about the curry powder? The shallots go in at the beginning with the chicken. So I threw them in with just before I did the garlic. So if you haven't done that, then go ahead and do that now. But ideally you want to put that in in the beginning because the garlic and the shallots will kind of liquefy as you cook it through and you will, it will just disappear magically. And it's because it gets cooked at a high heat. Um, what was the other question, Julia or Ruby? Uh, the curry powder. Curry powder goes in now. So if you wanted to do, for this recipe, I'd recommend a tablespoon. You throw that in and that's what'll give it its nice, wonderful golden color. And it'll give that curry flavor as well. Um, but I started with one tablespoon of, sorry, two tablespoons of dark soy sauce. I'm gonna go in now with two tablespoons of light soy sauce because it's, as you can see, pretty much covered up and I just wanna get those little white bits. Um, and that should take me all the way home with that. So I'm never going directly in with the 
clotted turner, I'm always going around because you don't want to break the noodles. You'll end up breaking some, but you want to avoid breaking all of it. Um, and that's the reason why um, I go around. And that's also the reason why you don't rehydrate them all the way because they start to break in the wok with the heat. And so we want to let those noodles come in and soak up all that soy sauce that I just threw in. The shouting I'll keep to at the end because I'm going to deglaze the wok with it. What's going to go in now, though, is basically the scrambled eggs um, or the tofu sheets that have been shredded up. I keep calling them scrambled eggs. It's shredded omelet. <laughs> I must have a hankering for scrambled eggs. I keep saying it. <laughs> and the bean sprouts will go in in a second. I'm going to keep the heat high now because I... Singapore noodles are dry, and the reason they're dry is because um, you don't add a lot of sauce to it, and the sauce that gets added is absorbed by the rice noodles. But to finish it off, that little sort of caramelized wok flavor comes from the heat, and so we need that heat to be cranked up all the way. And so if you're doing it with the cast iron skillet, you'd want to pop it back up to high heat at this point, and then you would end with deglazing uh, the, the pan with the cooking wine or sherry if that's what you're using. I'm just going to go ahead and throw the bean sprouts. And that's pretty much ready, guys. I'm going to deglaze and turn the heat off. So I'm just going to do that now. And I've just turned the heat all the way off because the wok still has that residual heat that's going to help with coating everything in there with the wine. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done. This is Singapore noodles. Ready to serve. Oh. So will you tell us about the noodles that you used and like why that size, mm -hmm. what makes them special? Yeah, so um, Singapore noodles or bihun or mai fan, depending on which dialect of Chinese you speak, is literally translated rice vermicelli noodles. So it is a thin kind. I actually have a bag that I'll show you guys um, just so you can see what it looks like. So that's him there. Um, so I like to get them in segmented um, little... You can get big ones, so just like a big chunk of noodles. I like the smaller ones because when you rehydrate them, you can kind of keep them in little clumps like you saw me put in. This is the type of noodle that you would use. It is a rice noodle. Um, you wouldn't use um, the thicker rice noodles, also known as rice sticks, uh, or, or a yellow noodle, which is um, made with uh, flour and egg. It's just not the type of noodle that's used which, with Singapore noodles. However, um, if that's what you have at home and, or that's what you like to eat, you could do it. There are typically different versions of noodles. So the rice sticks, um, which is a broader noodle, is used, used to make kuei tiao. Um, the thicker yellow noodles um, is used to make hokkien mee. So there are different types of noodles that are made in sort of just that general sort of, like if you were to go into a Malaysian coffee shop, these are typically the ones that are up on offer. Singapore noodles usually is made with, um, or bihun, fried bihun, is usually made with uh, thin rice vermicelli noodles. So hopefully that answers the question. As you notice, I didn't add salt to the dish at all. So, right. and the reason for that is because a lot of the salt does, as you rightly pointed out, it's derived from the soy sauce. So the darker soy sauce is more intense. It's got a stronger flavor. And so I always suggest to people, give it like a dab on your tongue to get a sense of what it tastes like before you cook with it. Um, if you find that the dark soy sauce is too strong, then I'd recommend sticking to the light soy sauce and your noodles will just be a different, a lighter color is all. So it's aesthetically, that's the only difference, but definitely adjust it. Like I threw everything in because I've practiced doing this a few times, but Cook it to your, your liking. So you can always start with half a teaspoon or a teaspoon or a tablespoon and then kind of go, go from there. Yeah. I'm going to switch to this camera. So hopefully, yep, you can see that. So I'm going to get a bowl and we're just going to plate. I'm going to grab some chopsticks. Where did my chopsticks go? There they are. We're just going to dish out. I'm just going to quickly do it 
here. It's actually, it's like kind of one of those things, it's just really hearty, it's a breakfast dish, but then some people end up having it at 3 a.m. after a long night out. Like, it's just one of those really wonderful, um, like, it's just it's comfort food, yes. in a sense. Just thinking about that. Um, so we have... Um, it's all relative, so that's me putting the prawns on there, by the way. Um, so, as I mentioned, um, I personally don't like it with the curry because it reminds me of Indian food. Um, and that's not to say it's bad or good, it's just a per personal preference. Um, again, the one that was popularized in Hong Kong or was created in Hong Kong and popularized throughout the world is the one that has curry powder in it. The one I've made today doesn't. So it's up to you if you feel like, you know, you want something that's a little bit more familiar to what you've grown up with, um, particularly in the Western parts of the world, throw the curry powder in, but um, it's tricky. I, I don't like saying something's authentic or inauthentic because it's relative. It's what you know. For me, it's this. It's the one I know doesn't have curry powder. So I think, or I suggest, do it your way. Do whatever makes sense. I can stop the screen share for a sec and yeah. that way you can pin folks. Yeah, okay, go for perfect. it. All right. that, that's sensational, Mary. That looks really good. All right, who else wants to show off what you have made? Oh, nice, William. That really looks good. Uh, yeah. It's like, I life's too good. difficult. Let's just, let's just eat Singapore noodles and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>